Mark chapter 15 tonight. Mark chapter 15. We're going to look at what grace looks like tonight. Mark chapter 15. Thank you, Austin. Thank you for everything each and every one of you do, taking care of the building, just being faithful, helping in different classes, nursery, sound, everything you all do. Thank you. We appreciate it. Pastor appreciates it. Thank you all. As you turn to Mark chapter 15 tonight, we see the Hebrew says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. The Bible says we need to lay aside the sins that beset us, lay aside the weights as those that have gone on before us did by looking unto Jesus. And we need to consider him. So tonight, as we turn to Mark chapter 15, this is one of the passages, uh, Matthew 26, 27, Mark 14, 15, uh, the last couple chapters of Luke 22, 23, and John 18, 19, I think, all record the crucifixion of our Lord. Uh, Jesus dying on the cross for us, he's gone through many things. And we see this day we're about to read about was one of the darkest days in history. We see it was one of the most important days in history, though. The most important days would be the day Christ was born, the day he died, we're going to look at tonight, the day he rose again, and then the day he'll return are probably the four most important days in history. But we see Jesus, the crowd, has chosen Barabbas to be freed, Christ to be crucified, and Pilate delivers Christ to be crucified. And on the way to Calvary, the soldiers take Jesus to the hall called Praetorium, and they begin to mock him. They make fun of his kingship. They had previously mocked him being a prophet. He's a prophet, and they say, And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked, say, asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? But now they're making fun of him as king. They made fun of him for being a prophet, but now they're making fun of the king of kings for being a king. They clothed him with purple as a king would wear. And we see, if we look down to verse, chapter, or verse number 16 of Mark 15, it says, And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band, that whole band of the soldiers comes together, and they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. Jesus is the King of kings. He's the Lord of all. He's Lord of lords. And they're making fun of him. They put him in purple as a king would wear. The soldiers plaited. They weaved together a crown of thorns to place upon the Son of God's head. It's placed upon the King of kings' heads. They salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. But they're mocking him. And they smote him on the head with a staff made of reed. They spit upon him. They bowed at their knees to him, not realizing one day every knee is going to truly bow to this king of kings. They don't realize that's coming. You see, our Lord then is put back in his own clothes, and he's led to be crucified. Simon the Cyrenian carries his cross up the hill, and Jesus is crucified. He arises again from the dead a few days later. But we see he did all of this for us. And Hebrew says, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. So tonight we're going to look at, I just want to look tonight at the crown of thorns. We see in verse 17, and they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, hail king of the Jews. Let's go ahead and pray. God, as we come into your presence, Lord, thank you so much just for this evening. Just this wonderful group of people coming, helping, praying, serving, just here to listen to worship you. I thank you for that. I pray you to have your will in each and every one of our hearts. I believe each year is saved, but if one isn't saved tonight, we pray that you would save them. That's the most important thing that can happen tonight. We pray as Christians would draw close to you. Thank you for your son. He became a human for us. He came. He died on the cross for us. He took our crown of thorns. He wore it. He took our cross. He died for us. And he rose again so we could go to heaven. Thank you so much for each of these things, Lord. Just touch my tongue. Just let it be your words, not mine. Help us just to learn more about your son and just be more grateful for what he did for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Amen. So as we look tonight, we see they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head. This crown of thorns. Jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords, but they're making fun of him by putting a crown of thorns on his head. Matthew Henry says, a crown of, stra of straw or rushes would have been banter enough, but this was pain also. If you think about it, they could have taken, they could have taken a crown of straw, a crown of anything else and put it on him to mock him. But instead, they put on him a crown of thorns. This was also pain. As we look at the material of the crown, we see it was made out of thorns. Of all things they could have made out, out, it out of, they made it out of thorns, which first appear when sin entered into the world. We see in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, God creates man, 
He creates Adam and Eve in this perfect world. He creates everything in order. Each thing to where it can survive on the things that he has created before. Light, and then the firmament, and then the sea, and different animals. And then finally, man is made on the sixth day. The world is perfect. God comes in chapter 2. He makes Eve for Adam. But in chapter 3, we see the serpent enters the earth. We see the serpent comes. He enters the Garden of Eden. And he says to Eve, so you want to eat one of the, what part of this fruit? He said, did God say you couldn't eat of this fruit? She said, we can't eat of it, neither can we touch it, lest we die. And so Eve says, you know what? God says we can't touch it, but Satan deceives her. He says, will you surely die? He tricks her, sin enters into the world. Adam eats, sin enters into the world. God comes looking for Adam and Eve, his creation. He's going to fellowship with them, but they're hiding. And we see as they're punished, Eve's going to suffer in childbirth. The serpent's going to go upon his stomach all his days. But we see Adam... In Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, And unto Adam, he, God says, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till, the ground, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou return. We see in verse 18, it says, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth. For the first time we ever see thorns was after sin came into the world. It's a representation of our sins. We see, and they take the crown of thorns made of the things that were not existed until sin came in our, into our world. Thorns came in, and that's what they're placing upon the Son of God's head. The material of the crown, it was simply thorns that came about after sin. Jesus is dying for our sins, and they take these thorns representing sin and put it on his head. We see the material, but we also see the making of the crown. We see in John 19, 1 to 5, it says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. He beat him. He whipped him with a whip. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came forth wearing the crown of thorns, in the purple robe, and Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. We see as he brings out Jesus, Jesus is wearing this purple robe, a crown of thorns. He says, Behold the man. We know Pilate is going to put on the sign above his head, Behold the king of the Jews. And they say, Don't make him the king of the Jews. Don't put that. But put that. He said he's the king of Jews. Pilate says, What I've written, I've written. But we see the material is made out of thorns, but the making of it, think about it. How would you make this crown of thorns? There's no way in that day to make a crown of thorns without tearing your hands apart. Whatever they made to mock the Son of God also would have hurt them. When they twisted the thorns together, however they would have made it, it would have destroyed their hands. When they pressed it down on the Son of God's head, it would have hurt them also. See, our sins, it doesn't just hurt Jesus. It didn't just hurt Jesus on the cross. It hurts us also. Just as this crown of thorns would have hurt whoever made it, whoever put it on the Son of God's head, our sins also are going to destroy us if we don't let Jesus take control of our lives. The making of the crown, and we see the misery of the crown. Jesus Christ, when he died for us, was absolutely miserable, obviously. But we think about his outward misery. He'd already been scourged in Mark 15, verse 15. He was spit upon, he was beat, but now the creator himself, he's beaten and worn. He has a crown of thorns placed upon his head. Imagine the fatigue he already feels. He's been through a trial. Many of his friends have betrayed him. He's already fatigued from this, from the beatings. Imagine the shooting pain from the scourgings. And then imagine the weakness he already felt in his body. And then they come up to him, and they place this crown of thorns on his head. You're already weak, you're already tired, you can't handle it. And then they put a crown of thorns on his head. He's the son of God, but he was also 100% man. He's 100% man, and he feels all this pain on the outside. But also, there's the inward misery of the crown. Jesus wasn't just miserable on the outside. As I said, his body is worn, it's beaten, and our Savior is weak and he's exhausted. Though he's got in the flesh, he feels all the pain. And he feels the emotional pain too. One of his friends, his disciples, Judas, has just betrayed him. Peter has denied him. All the disciples flee. This whole band of Roman soldiers is mocking him. He's weak, yet his body is in incomprehensible pain. And imagine, you know, when you're tired, you can't, some of us can't. I don't know if you're like this. I have a hard time handling a ton of noise when I'm exhausted. Jesus is exhausted. He's in this hall praetorium with all these Roman soldiers making fun of him. They're mocking him. Imagine the emotional, the inward misery he's going through. And then for them to put a crown of thorns on his head. 
You know, some people, I've heard even just with the scourgings of the Roman soldiers, some people wouldn't even live through that. Jesus is already at the point where many would have already died. But he's going to go to the cross for us. But Hebrews says, despite all this misery, it says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's been betrayed by most all of his friends. John is still there, and his mother and some of the ladies are still there. But he's betrayed by most of his friends. He's beaten, he's scourged, he's being mocked, he's being ridiculed, he's spit upon, he's been scourged. Each of these things, and all he has to look forward to is the cross. But Paul writes, we believe in Hebrews, he says, the joy that was set before him, because of that, he endured the cross, despising the shame. He could look past the shame of the cross, and now he's set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That joy, he did all of this for us. There was joy past the cross for him because of he knew we could accept him as Savior. We could go to heaven because of what he's going through. We see the, it's, the thorns are a representation of sin that came into the world once sin entered into the world. Whoever would have made this, the making of this crown, it would have hurt them just as much as it would have hurt Jesus in their hands, but it's on his head. We see he's absolutely miserable. And then we see the mockery of the crown. Our Savior has been taken, he's been beaten, he's been mocked, he has been unfairly tried, and now the mocking just continues. Imagine how awful this day is, and now they continue mocking him. He will soon be nailed to the cross, he will be hung, he'll be beaten as he fights to breathe, lifting his body for every breath. He knows he'll eventually die of weakness and suffocation. He's going to die on the cross. The mockery of the crown, Isaiah prophesies, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Isaiah says, we did not honor him. We took the king of kings, this man of sorrows, as Isaiah records, and we hung him on the cross, not knowing he's the son of God. The mockery of this. He is literally the king of kings. He is the creator. But they put purple on him. They put this crown of thorns on him. They're outwardly making him miserable. Inwardly, he's going through all this emotional struggle, this emotional pain. All of this for us. And they place the crown of thorns on his head and the pain that's going through his body. He did all of this for us. But as we look at the thorns, we talked about how it didn't come into the world until sin entered into the world. But every time you see a thorn in the Bible, it's always in a bad connotation. There's nothing good about thorns. We see the meaning of the crown, the meaning of the thorns we talked about is the world. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. When the ground was cursed, the thorns and the thistles came up. It represents the world. But we also see the Apostle Paul talking about his thorn in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. You see, Paul says, So that I would be humbled, I would not be exalted above measure. God gave to me a thorn in the flesh. The thorn was a thorn in the flesh. It represents the world, it represents flesh, and he says it's a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. This thorn, it represents the world, it represents the flesh, the sinful flesh, it represents Satan. But we see God came, Jesus Christ came to earth to overcome all of these. He came to overcome, to save the world that was cursed by sin, to save each person in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God sent not the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We see the thorns represented the flesh, but we see that Romans 8, 2-4 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. God came in the form of our flesh. He was perfect. He was sinless. But in the form of our flesh, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Jesus came down in the likeness of flesh for us. He came down as a human to die on the cross for us. And then he also came so that we can have victory in our lives over the devil, so the devil will not reign. Paul records in 2 Corinthians 4, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, the lowercase g, the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, 
should shine unto him. We see Jesus Christ came, he came to die for each and every one of us, uh, and we know this, but even just this small portion of the crucifixion, the trial, everything we see, the crown of thorns Jesus wore for us, thorns did not come into the world until the world was cursed with sin. In making it, they would have harmed themselves just as sin harms us as much as it harmed Christ, and it would bring us to an eternal damnation in hell if we're not saved. We see that the meaning of it, it represents the world, it represents the flesh, it represents the devil. And we see there's also a mystery of the crown. We see as Jesus, if you want to turn to Isaiah 53, I, Jesus here is fulfilling prophecy through wearing this crown of thorns. Psalm 69, 19 says, Thou hast known my reproach and my shame, my dishonor, and mine adversaries are all before me, are all before thee. See, Jesus represented in this time, and him wearing this crown of thorns, him being humiliated, being mocked, Jesus Christ fulfills the prophecies, the mystery of the crown. Isaiah 53, 3 to 8 says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so opened he not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. We see Isaiah prophesies he was despised, he was rejected, he was a man of sorrows, and we see as Jesus Christ comes, he's tried, they put this crown of, thorn on him, crown of thorns on him, he's despised, he's rejected, he's a man of sorrows, he's fulfilling this prophecy, this prophecy, but he bore our griefs, he carried our sorrows, we didn't esteem him, we didn't honor him, but it was for our peace, with his stripes we are healed. Everything he did here was for us. He's fulfilling this prophecy. But then we also want to see the message of the crown of thorns. Tonight, I believe each and every one of us are saved, but I just want to take some time just to realize what all Jesus has done for us. This crown of thorns, it prophesied a gloomy prediction. A gloomy prediction. Sin always leads to death. Thorns were never in the earth until sin entered into the world. So these thorns representing sin were placed upon his head just as Jesus is getting ready to go to Calvary and die for our sins. We know this crown of thorns is pointing towards his death. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head. And, he be and they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. They smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him and took off the purple from him, he put off his own clothes and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. We know Jesus Christ, they put the purple on him, put the crown of thorns on him. Then they take him, they mock him, they beat him, they put him back in his clothes, and he's going to go die on the cross for us. You know, if it were right here, just as this crown of thorns pointed to his death, our sin is what brings us to our, our death. James says, And lust, when it is conceived, bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it conceiveth, bringeth forth death. Sin always brings us to death. The gloomy prediction for the wages of sin is death. Revelation 20, verses 14 to 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, I'm glad it didn't stop there, though. It didn't just, was, the message wasn't just a gloomy prediction. There was also a glorious pardon. As Jesus has his crown of thorns on his head, they take it off, they lead him to the cross. We see, as we talked about in Isaiah, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity 
of us all. Why was he going through this crown of thorns? Why was he going to the cross? It was for us. Our iniquities, our sins, everything we'd ever done was placed on Christ. When he went to the cross, he's hanging on the cross. All of our sins are laid on him, and God turns away from him. He says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken him? The heavenly father turns from his own son because our sins are laid on him. Isaiah says, the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Paul says, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Tonight, I believe each and every one of us from our testimonies are saved. But when we really look at even just this crown of thorns, just the time even before he went to the cross, probably the worst death any humans ever died, we see he became sin for us that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. We can go to God in his own righteousness because of what Jesus Christ did for us. The crown of thorns appointed to his death, which also brought us a glorious pardon. When we believe on Jesus Christ as our Savior, that he took our place on the cross, the crown of thorns was our crown of thorns, we can accept Christ as our Savior. We can now go to God. We can have fellowship with him on earth. And one day when we die from, pass away from this earth, we can eternally be in heaven with him because Jesus paid it all for us. One songwriter said, it should have been a kingly crown with golden diamonds all around, the precious brow with jewels adorned. Instead, he wore my crown of thorns. The poet's rhyme could not express the depths of my unworthiness, nor could the songs of seraphim convey my praise and love for him. He wore my crown of thorns and died. Upon my cross, they pierced his side. And it was me that should have worn the cross, the nails, this crown of thorns, the cross, the nails, this crown of thorns. The grace of Christ is like a rose whose beauty shines and daily grows. But just beside the grace we see are thorns of pain he wore for me. He wore my crown of thorns and died. Upon my cross they pierced his side, and it was me that should have died, the that should have worn the cross, the nails, this crown of thorns. So tonight Hebrews says, consider him. He says, as we're trying to lay aside these weights, trying to lay aside these sins, we're going to look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. A different message tonight, maybe more of a Sunday morning message, but as we consider the crown of thorns, they were made of the very thing that came into the world when, the, when the sin cursed the world. We see just as whoever made it, it would have tore their hands apart, would have hurt them as they pressed it on Christ's head. Our sins will destroy us if we don't turn to him. We see they mocked him with this crown. We see he was miserable inside and out for us. But he was fulfilling prophecies with his crown. He overcame the world. He overcame the flesh. He overcame the devil. There's a gloomy prediction. Our sins will kill each of us if we don't turn to him. But there's a glorious part in that Christ died to pay our sin debts and give us eternal life. So as he wore this crown of thorns and went to the cross and died and he rose again from the dead, he defeated death and paid our pardon so we could spend eternity in heaven. And tonight I just wanted to take some time just to consider him as Hebrews says. So this week, whatever we're going through, we talked about this morning, keep going, keep serving God, be faithful to what he has us to do, but consider what he went through for us and that we can keep going for him. As our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed.